the things that yeah. keep me up because you you don't have control over them mm -hmm. and you wonder where are people where are we in this you know where are our hearts what's going to happen in this next election i am terrified about what could possibly happen because our leaders matter who we select who speaks for us who holds that bully pulpit it affects us in ways that I, sometimes i think people take for granted Okay, this is very interesting. I'm very excited about this Michelle Obama conversation. Joel Gilbert's here is the author and filmmaker behind Michelle Obama 2024, her real life story and plan for power. Mr. Gilbert, thanks for being here. Uh, my first question, is Michelle Obama a man? No, I'm, I'm not, Joel. Come on. We're not going to go there, Joel. Not on this show. Well, I can tell you that's a it's a total joke from uh, Joan Rivers, who's a comedian, and people picked up on that online to kind of make a joke, I think, because Michelle had 15 years of all positive publicity, so it gave something negative mm. about her. But it's not true, she is female, she's always been female, and uh, Michelle is a total phony, but it has nothing to do with her gender. <laughs> There's lots of reasons to be critical, transgenderism is not one of them. Okay, uh, Liz, I love doing deep dives, I love doing biographies of people, and I don't know that much about Michelle Obama, and honestly, kind of need to be reminded of the Obamas even again, that seems like so long ago. Um, so if you don't mind, take us back to the beginning. Like, where was she born? Who? Her parents, et cetera. Yeah, look, Michelle really is the ultimate political animal. She was born into a family with her father being a politician. Her father was a precinct captain in Chicago working for the Democrat Party machine. Uh, she ran for student council and was the treasurer in, in high school. She grew up in Jesse Jackson's house. She was best friends with his daughter, Santita, when Jackson was running for president. So she's always been around politics. She said wow. she fell in love with Barack because he gave a political speech in, in a church that she liked. So she's extremely political. Uh, her professor at Harvard, Charles Ogletree, was also a Barack Obama's professor a few years before Michelle. And he said between Michelle and Barack, he thought it would have been Michelle to run for president, not Barack. That's how political she is. So she's always been heavily into politics. And uh, wow. in, in my film... Yeah, in my film and book, I go into her real childhood, her real life story uh, that she's been kind of trying to cover up for political reasons, to manipulate voters and especially manipulate the black community into thinking she's just one of these ordinary black folks. She's just like them. But it, it's all a complete fraud. I've never heard that Jesse Jackson connection ever before. Yeah. Uh, what's oh, yeah. something about her past that she wouldn't want to get out there that that would come across as not good? <laughs> Well, a couple things. Her main vulnerability is her terrible relationship with the black community in Chicago that she doesn't want people to know about. As a kid growing up, Michelle had nothing to do with the black community. She refused to study at schools one block from her house because they were all black. Her and her brother both went an hour away to a Catholic school and a magnet school. Michelle had no black friends. Uh, the kids accused her of acting white and talking white. Michelle even writes in her book about getting beat up by a girl who called her an Oreo. I mean, it's a racial insult. It means you're black on the outside, but you're really a white girl on the inside. And then Michelle doesn't want you to know that she got her revenge on the black community when she was working in Chicago in her career. Michelle was the assistant planning commissioner for Mayor Richard Daley, and they used Michelle to kick 20,000 black people out of their homes at Cabrini Green. It was a project, and the Democrat donor developers like Tony Resco wanted the land to build condos. And the black, uh, the white liberal establishment couldn't hire a white person to kick black people out of their homes. So Michelle always took those jobs to do the dirty work for white liberals. Michelle wow. kicked them out of their homes and told them it's going to be good for you. And having proven she could do the dirty work against the black community, Michelle was hired by the University of Chicago Medical Center to head up the Southside Health Collaborative. And this was a program because they were losing money when black people who didn't have good insurance showed up at the emergency room at the medical center. Michelle's job was to load them into white vans and dump them back on the south side at these crappy clinics and strip malls. And Michelle told them it's gonna be good for you. So Michelle always exploited and abused the black community. And she's been pretending now for years to be one of these ordinary black folks. I suffered from discrimination growing up. I suffered from white flight. All these are lies to manipulate uh, minority voters into thinking that she's one of them. Amazing. Where did this come from? Where did her 
views on black people come from? Well, it, I think it came from the fact that she grew up in a political family. Her father's job was to convince the black neighborhood to vote for the white liberals. So Michelle was always an elitist and the black community didn't accept her. She was thought of as a white girl. She talked about her hero growing up was Mary Tyler Moore. She watched the Brady Bunch every day and they beat her up. And Mich I've even got her on tape in my film. She said she's afraid to go to, out of her house because the black kids would beat her up. So Michelle's animus toward the black community started at a young age and she exploited them in her career. It's no surprise that she always took jobs to exploit and abuse the black community. But for politics, Michelle does things like putting on a phony urban accent when speaking to a black audience. Uh, she lies and said she was held back in life because of her race. And I expose all of that in my film and my book. Amazing. She also says she hates politics. Well, what's... <laughs> But I, I didn't know she had such a deeply political background, as you say, so that's clearly- yeah, Well, you might, I'll tell you how that came around. You might remember in 2008, Michelle was running around the country uh, giving speeches to huge crowds, very nasty anti-American speeches. She said, you can't afford healthcare, you don't get sick in this country, you can't afford your mortgage, you can't buy food. And she went over the top one day and said, for the first time in my life, I'm proud of my country because Barack won a primary. Now, she said a lot worse yeah. things than that, but the media picked up on that. And that's when the Obama campaign told her, they said, look, people are paying attention to you now. We could lose the race because of you. And that's when the next day she got a speechwriter and she took a step back and said, oh, 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 I hate politics. I just want to be the mom in chief. That's where that comes from. So when she got Whoa. in the White House, she kind of tried to stay in the background. But she's more political than Barack. She's a better speaker. She comes across more authentic. And she really is a better politician than Barack. Wow. Okay, so I've fallen for this shtick because I never knew otherwise. Like I, I never dug deeper. I never thought about it for long in this. So I fell for the shtick that she has no political ambition. You're saying she does. Oh, she's very political. She's the classic political animal from a political family. She grew up around Jesse Jackson. She, like I said, she fell in love with Barack only because of his political uh, behavior. So she, she married a politician. She, she married her father. Yeah, so he, she married a politician. So she's uh, extremely just, political. I mean, she's always dropping political innuendos. People don't remember that Michelle tweeted on January 7th, 2021, demanding that Trump be removed from social media. And the next day they removed him from social media. She's all politics all the time. Wow. So do you think, let's go backwards. Do you think she could run in 2028? Uh, I think she's primed to run in 2024. The uh, Democrat Party establishment doesn't want her. The voters don't, I mean, they don't want Biden. The voters don't want Biden. He clearly is going to uh, lose to Trump if the election is fair. Uh, I think Michelle's been preparing to run against uh, Trump for some years because she's following the exact same formula, copying what Barack did to run for president. Barack had a voter registration organization before he ran for president in Chicago called Project Vote. Michelle started something called When We All Vote and got $26 million from George Soros to register voters. Uh, Barack wrote two autobiographies, uh, Dreams from My Father and The Audacity of Hope before he ran for president. Sure enough, Michelle wrote her best-selling book, Becoming, and also The Light We Carry. They're both also on Netflix. And of course, Barack was the keynote speaker who introduced John Kerry at the 2004 Democrat convention. That's the position they give to the person they think will be the nominee at the next convention. Sure enough, there was Michelle in 2020 introducing Joe Biden as the keynote speaker at the Democrat convention. And you look at the fact that they put the national uh, convention, the Democrat DNC is in Chicago this year, Michelle's hometown. I think it's set up for Michelle to replace Joe Biden. Wow. What do we need to know big picture about the Obamas and the Obama worldview? Well, the Obamas are radical Marxists out of Chicago. Uh, the, the difference being that when the Tea Party was mostly protesting against uh, fiscal irresponsibility, kind of rose out of the Republican Party, the Republican establishment rejected the Tea Party and tried to break them up. When the radical Marxists with Obama emerged out of Chicago, the Democrat Party embraced them and put them in charge of their party. And that's why the Democrat Party has turned into a radical socialist party. So the Obamas, uh, have an agenda that they don't always talk about. When Barack ran for president, he ran as a mainstream candidate. He said, I'm gonna obey the constitution. Uh, I'm gonna enforce the border. I'm against gay marriage. 
And as soon as he got elected, he threw the voters under the bus and pursued this radical agenda that nobody voted for. So uh, Americans will never agree with socialism, with communism and socialism. They don't agree with this total nonsense. So the, uh, the radicals have to always present a different front, lie about their agenda, or just say they wanna help people, uh, they're against racism. And once you give them the power, they turn everything uh, into chaos. Gosh, it's it's so easy to sell the Michelle Obama package if you're a Democrat to the to the normie and the low info voter out there. She's like a younger Oprah, and she's gonna unite people, and she's kind and wonderful and youthful and vibrant and so eloquent, like they said about Barack. Uh, it's such an easy pitch. But but and I'll just I'll, I'll my last question here is on enthusiasm. There's zero for Biden. Uh, but there's, there, there would be a lot for Michelle Obama, don't you think? Yeah, there are polls out there right now showing that uh, she's the most beloved Democrat. She's a pop culture phenomenon. I went to her uh, event with Oprah here in Los Angeles last December, and she had uh, 1, 6,000 people lined up for two hours. They already had tickets. So she can draw a huge crowd. Yeah. She can fill up stadiums. And she's the most beloved Democrat. She's had 15 years of hundreds of magazine covers, interviews, uh, you name it, all positive. So I think she's primed to become the candidate and clearly the Democrats are, are done with Joe Biden. They just wanna hang all the terrible results on Biden and start fresh with yes. Michelle who can appeal to yeah. nostalgia. Remember how much you love the Obama yes. years. I wanna bring us back together. Yes, yeah, so, I'm sorry, last question. What about the Kamala problem? Kamala's not a problem. She has no support. Uh, I think white people mistakenly think that the black community has any connection to her. Uh, Kamala is not African-American. Her mother's from India and her father's from Jamaica and Kamala grew up in Canada. So she has no common experiences with the black community. She's not African-American. And I think uh, Kamala will be completely ignored and no one will even think about her. Yeah, I think that's probably right. All right, Joel Gilbert, great stuff. Author, documentarian of Michelle Obama 2024, her real life story and the plan for power. Hey, Joel, thanks for all that insight. Great stuff.